Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. So we got the crypto market here in the green. Looks like Bitcoin is trying to regain some dominance, uh, wanting to reach 8,000. XRP trading at 39.5 cents, and uh, looks like there's quite a bit of green. Look at Litecoin up 10.43%, uh, quite a large gainer in the space right now. <laughs> Look at Aurora, 67% in the green, geez. What the heck are these coins? You know, some of them just go off and do their own thing based on uh, like one piece of news. So everybody just pumps into Aurora coin. That's not sustainable, guys. Uh, this is XRP on the daily and, uh, you know, um, indecisiveness right now. We're not seeing uh, too much movement upward, nor are we seeing movement downward. If we look at BTC on the same time frame, uh, we're seeing kind of a similar pattern. BTC is what's looking like uh, to be a head and shoulders formation. Uh, I saw this on Twitter from Peter Brandt. I do not believe this is a head and shoulders top in BTC. So that is good. In order for a head and shoulders to complete complete its formation, it would need to cross the neckline, okay, and so that would be here. Okay, the level in which we can clearly see that there is uh, resistance happening, so if we go be uh, below this line, so if we do this, then it's confirmation, uh, true head and shoulders, and uh, we will see a dump. Most likely reverting back to the bearish trend, uh, but Peter Brandt says he does not believe this is a head and shoulders formation, so that could be good news. Could we see Bitcoin move to the upside? Well, that would be great, wouldn't it? Uh, this in the news from Crypto Wolf at XRP Crypto Wolf. Ripple launches Brazilian office, eyes further expansion into South America. Ripple wants to bring more clients to its payment network, RippleNet targeting Brazil and all of South America. And so remember this from Crypto Wolf. Remember that Brazil is the next X Rapid core. Door. Uh, and it brings us to this article here. So Ribble, the firm behind the third largest crypto by market cap, has launched a Brazilian office with the aim to expand across Latin America. Cointelegraph Brazil reports on June 10th. According to the report, the official announcement will be made by CIAB Febraban, a major fintech and banking event that will take place in Sao Paulo from June 11th to June 13th. The new office will reportedly be led by Luiz Antonio Sacco, former CEO at the Brazilian subsidiary of the Warranty Group, a global warranty solution provider. So not only does Ripple want to target Brazil, but they want to target the rest of South America. And uh, Brazil, I guess, is a good first step, right? One of the biggest countries in South America. And so to date, Ripple's payment solution has already been adopted by three clients in Brazil, including financial firms such as Santander Brazil, BTEC Global, and Banco Rendimento. Ripple is also planning to launch educational and training programs in collaboration with major universities in Brazil, including the University of Sao Paulo and Funda Sao Getulio Vargas University, I suppose. Sacco noted that investment in education will play a key role in promoting blockchain technology, while the research in the field is expected to expand career opportunities in the region. Uh, yeah, you know, if uh, Ripple is planning to be part of their educational system, I could see how this could uh, foster a really good relationship uh, with uh, the Brazilian government and the people of Brazil. You know, just being able to get the blockchain technology in the country, uh, then you'll be able to do business with uh, within South America, I'm sure, as Brazil has a lot of trading partners within South America. You get the ball rolling and then it snowballs from there. And so this from AMB Crypto, is Ripple's testnet being used for running Thailand-based D-Money services? Uh, and I saw this article, while strong opposition from government bodies has crippled cryptocurrency adoption in the past, the recent involvement of non-financial companies leveraging crypto has been a differentiator for future users. As a result, crypto leaders, including exchanges and token providers, are on a partnering spree aimed at gaining a monopoly over new and emerging markets. Okay, then it talks about Ripple and how they are leading the race. The crypto tech giant currently speculated to run the entire network for Facebook's upcoming stablecoin. Additionally, the company made news for its numerous partnerships with fintechs and banks across the world. Uh, Ripple's server being used to host D-Money. So this is the speculation here. And it shows a little screen grab here. Uh, again, this code stuff is beyond me, guys. There's a little description down here, though. The screenshot details the use of Ripple Test Network for running D-Money service. D-Money is a Thailand-based financial institution that is currently partnered with MoneyGram for enabling global distribution of currencies. While the client IP address on the screen shot is private. The code uses a URL that points to Ripple's official ripple.com server. So it talks about using uh, XC test, which is a framework to write unit tests for X code projects. Additionally, the code shows the use of NGINX Injinx, I don't know, high performance server that is currently used by companies such as Netflix and GitHub, 
which has also led speculators to believe the actuation of the project. So similar code used in these projects are uh, leading people to believe that yes, Ripple is indeed running this service. So how do you pronounce that? Nginx? Nginx? I don't know. I So many weird acronyms in this space. And so there's another screen grab here in which uh, Twitter user said, uh, actual external address below points to Ripple's hosted Amazon services, so dmoney.xctest.i.ripple.com. So very interesting observations here. It's looking as if Ripple Tech is being used, albeit probably on a smaller scale at this moment in time. Even when we've heard of companies using uh, RippleNet uh, today, even using XRP, a lot of them are saying that they're only being used for small transactions, you know, $1,000, maybe under $10,000. This is the first step, right? This is the, the first taste to get the ball rolling. We haven't seen the real world adoption where we're seeing millions if not billions of dollars flowing through XRP yet but we've always got to start somewhere this from XRP Neo on Twitter that's uh, at XRP underscore Anderson the Facebook coin is great news why and this can seem a little counterintuitive but just hear him out regulations think about it a company with 2.3 billion users worldwide will release their coin Facebook is in every country in the world unless it's banned of course governments have to pay attention therefore global regulations people and this has been a big point, I think, uh, from the beginning. When these companies, these big mainstream corporations are getting into cryptocurrency, the world has to pay attention because these companies are too big for them not to be paying attention to what they're doing. But here is the flip side to the coin. And so I saw this from Central Bank Payment News. That's at CB Payment News on Twitter. And this from the BBC. IMF warns of giant tech firms dominance. Christine Lagarde said just a few firms with big data access and artificial intelligence could run the global payment and settlement arrangements. And so here's the article with regard to that. Christine Lagarde just said a few firms with big data access and artificial intelligence could run the global payment and settlement arrangements. Her warning came at the G20. Uh, the summit is also discussing the need to close tax loopholes for internet giants like Facebook and Google. One of the options being considered is to tax such companies where they make their profits rather than they base their headquarters. So a significant disruption to the financial landscape is likely to come from the big tech firms. Miss Lagarde said at the G20 summit, uh, she said such firms will use their enormous customer bases and deep pockets to offer financial products based on big data and artificial intelligence. So ultimately seeing Facebook, Google, big data, okay? These companies have your information. And she's suggesting that they could get into the financial world and that they could control ultimately how finance works and that they're a threat to traditional finance. So the way this is framed, this article, to me, it doesn't seem like she's talking about Ripple being a threat. I know some people are probably thinking, oh, well, Ripple is a big company and they're changing the face of finance. No, I don't think that that's what she's saying at all. What she's saying is these big data companies like Facebook and Google, they already have the information. They have the client base. They have your data. And so what prevents them from doing what your bank already does now part of the thing is banks are too stubborn to want to change right now but if they see that big data companies the Google's and the Facebook's of the world are taking their business don't you think that they'll probably want to find the fastest solution to combat this and who will they go to for that sure fast solution in order to be able to at least transfer funds cross-border instantly well ripple already has the infrastructure they already have built the technology whereas on the one hand, banks have seen Ripple as a threat, but maybe by seeing big data companies like Facebook and Google as a potential enemy, they'd be likely to warm up to a company like Ripple quicker than the time it takes to process an XRP transaction. Anyways, that's just my opinion, but I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.